Hello, I'm Dr. Colin Morley. I've been a paediatrician and a neonatologist for over 35 years. I've done a lot of research and in the last few years this has specialised in neonatal stabilisation and resuscitation. In the last 10 years I've been doing quite a lot of research related to resuscitation and stabilisation of babies immediately after birth. As you know, there are three different devices we can use for resuscitating babies. There's the self-inflating bag, there's an anaesthetic bag, and there's the T-piece. I particularly like the T-piece resuscitation device because it provides consistent CPAP and PEEP, and the inflating pressure can be fixed. So why should I want CPAP and PEEP during resuscitation? Well, can you imagine a newborn baby, immediately it's born, it has no air in the lungs, the baby's lungs are full of fluid, the baby has to establish lung volume, aerate the lungs, remove all the fluid from the lungs in order to facilitate quick gas expansion. Now the problem with premature babies is that their lungs are immature, they have very little surfactant, their muscles are weak, and they find it particularly difficult to clear their lungs of fluid. So this is just the time when we need to be helping them by giving them some extra pressure to help move that fluid out of the lung and establish a functional residual capacity. And that is where the use of CPAP or PEEP is so important. I'm now going to tell you about the component parts of the T-piece resuscitation device. First of all, it needs a gas supply coming either from the wall or cylinders. And then the flow of gas into the device is set by adjusting it here, and that should be a flow of somewhere around 8 to 10 litres a minute. The gas then flows through this tube to the T-piece device, which can be attached to a face mask or to an endotracheal tube. The PEEP or CPAP pressure is adjusted by altering that knob and the peak inflating pressure is adjusted from here. The pressures being delivered are seen on this dial here. So, in order to set it up, we first of all have the device with no uh, mask or tube on it, and we obstruct the far end, turn on the flow, adjust that to 10 litres a minute. And now I'm going to set the PEEP pressure. I suggest you set a PEEP pressure of somewhere just above 5 centimetres of water. 6, 7, but no less than 5. And so by looking at this dial here, I turn the knob in order to make sure I've got the pressure I want. And I've set it to six centimetres. So that's set the peak pressure. Now in order to set the peak pressure, the top, the inflating pressure, I put my finger over the hole in the peak valve. And the device is now reading a pressure of about 25 centimetres of water. I would like to set it to 30. So I'm going to turn the pressure relief valve knob until that pressure is at 30. But you might want to set it at 25 or 20 or some other pressure, and that's done by adjusting there. So now we've got the device set up for use on the baby. First of all, if we're going to give the baby face mask CPAP, we would attach the mask to the device. Remember, I've got it now set to deliver 
a CPAP pressure of 6. I'm going to just turn the baby sideways a little and put the mask on the baby's face. Putting the mask on the baby's face with an even pressure down and some chin lift. And I watch here to make sure that I'm delivering the CPAP pressure. So in this situation, the baby would be breathing spontaneously. It's breathing the gas being delivered from here. At the moment, I've got it on air. But the baby is breathing with a CPAP pressure of six centimeters of water. Now, if the baby is not breathing, I then ventilate by putting my finger over that hole and the pressure rises up to the preset pressure of 30. It's important that this is done at a rate of somewhere around 60 inflations a minute, but the finger is kept on this valve for about half a second at each time. Some people make the mistake of putting the finger on for too short a time, and that doesn't give enough time to inflate the baby. So it should be even on and off and on and off. Using that, you might want to give the baby a prolonged inflation immediately after birth. And that again is something that the T-piece uh, resuscitation device is very good at. So I could give a prolonged inflation by putting my finger on there and leaving it for about 10 seconds, in which case I'm inflating the baby with a pressure of 30 centimeters in order to help clear the fluid out and establish lung volume. I would now like to tell you about some important things you must remember when you're using a T-piece resuscitation device. As we've explained to you already, inflation is made by intermittently putting your finger over the hole in the PEEP valve. But not infrequently I've seen people put their finger on the hole and leave it there, often when they're being distracted by somebody asking them a question. Never do that. It should always be placed on intermittently. One of the other problems that can happen is that when you're using face mask ventilation, you place the face mask on the baby's face and during inflation, you notice that you're not achieving the set pressure. Here I'm achieving a pressure of about 20. The reason for that is that the mask is not on the baby's face properly and there's a leak, you're losing gas. Some people try and overcome that by turning up the gas flow. And certainly that will put the pressure up, but it causes a major problem. I'll show you here, if I've now just got the flow turned right up, the PEEP has risen from 5 to 15. And so during T-piece resuscitation, you need to set the flow at the beginning, adjust the PEEP, adjust the pressure, and not change the flow afterwards. If you're not getting the pressures, it's because you have a leak between the mask and the baby's face. When we ventilate the baby, one of the ways of seeing how effective it is is to see the chest wall rise. If the chest wall is not rising as the baby is being inflated, then there's two possible problems. The problems are that you've pushed the mask so tightly onto the baby's face, you've obstructed the nose and mouth. And the way to see whether that's a cause is just to lift the mask off and repositioning it. And then as you ventilate the baby, 
hopefully you see the chest wall rise. If that doesn't solve the problem, then it's likely that the baby has very stiff lungs. And if you're ventilating it and the lung chest is not moving, then the next thing is to turn up the pressure. We'll go up to 35 or 40 and see if that makes the chest move. So if the chest is not moving, either the pressure's too low or the mask is obstructing the mouth and nose. Traditionally, we've used pressures to ventilate babies at birth and also in the nursery. But really what we're trying to do is get a volume of gas into the baby, the tidal volume. Now, during neonatal resuscitation, we set a pressure. I set the pressure here at 30 centimetres of water, but that's a guess. We really don't know what the right pressure is. So I propose that in the future, we need to have a little flow sensor here that will measure the volume of gas going in and out of the baby so that when we can see the tidal volume, we can adjust the pressure to get the tidal volume at the right level, which is roughly five mils per kilogram body weight. A flow sensor would also show us that there's a lot of leak it would show gas going down and not much coming back. So it will be interesting to see what monitoring resuscitation involves in the future.